I'm Clark Easterling of Windy Hill Foundry. This episode is going to be about sand molding, basically, and fast forward. I'll try to do a voiceover as I go. These castings that I'm molding up are for a customer who collects vices, and he's got a really neat page on Instagram called Vice for Vices. His name is Alex, and I suggest you check it out. He's got some unique items on there. But anyway, he's in need of two bases and five handles. Uh, and I, he sent me the original castings. And I, you know, for anybody that does this stuff, as you can imagine, if you don't slick the surface of the original castings up with water putty and coat them, they're really difficult to remove from the sand. Uh, so, it's heavy. this is the original casting he sent me, and I slicked it over with water putty along with uh, a coat of paint to seal it. And that was a vice base, and this is a vice handle. This is actual casting as well. And uh, this would tighten the vase securely to the bench. These are the castings I was able to produce for the base. These are the handles that I was able to produce for the vise. They turned out pretty good. I'm three short though. I've got uh, two cast and complete. And I would have had a set of five, but I ran into some difficulty yesterday during the pour and hit some moisture in the weights that hold the mold down, uh, which happen to be directly over an open riser. So when you have molten iron coming up through the sand, through a hole in the opening, and it hits a wet plate that's holding the thing down, it explodes. So uh, anyway, I got to re-ram three more molds and uh, get that out by the end of the week, I hope, if the weather permits. Uh, it's supposed to be below freezing, and it's hard to make a mold with ice in your sand, so uh, I may have to wait till Wednesday or Thursday. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'm going to do my part to try to spit out more of these and I try to keep my time frame around 10 minutes, uh, just to make sure you don't fall asleep. I'm starting off with facing sand, which is a slight bit drier in content and I use a small metal shroud to keep from wasting it and here I'm backing it with regular sand and removing it. This particular mold has a half blind riser as you can see in the coat section. I prefer to use blind risers whenever possible just to keep the atmosphere from chilling the riser so fast. I'm making the runner that's actually going to fill the mold and it's going to come out from under the riser and it will be under the parting line unlike the riser which is above the parting line.
I'm cutting the sprue at this point and it will feed directly into the riser above the parting line. Okay, we hit bottom. This step is to create a runner or a passage for the iron to go from the bottom of the sprue straight into the bottom of the riser. I'm venting the riser since it's the highest point to help the gases escape and fill the voids rapidly. So all we have to do now is cut our pouring basin. This is the handle and the lug that it's connected to. I'm going to cast both these pieces in the same flask. I will not be using a half blind riser for this particular mold. There's no need for it because it doesn't require as much volume. I will use a open riser but it's more or less to capture in the trash that will tend to float up in it and it'll stay trapped in the top. Because this part is not a split pattern, I have to establish a parting line on both pieces. And the easiest way to do that, especially since I have to make five parts, is to have one master that's already coped down, which is uh, the process in order to establish a parting line manually like this. You dig down halfway through to the part, clean it out good, make sure it'll release, and then you use this half to make the others, or to get them started with, so you don't waste so much time coping down on each individual pattern. You're going to see me having to flip-flop these several times and try to get them to release. That's just part of it before you finally find the ideal parting line in the parts. This half that I'm starting with now is one of the actual molds. I will ram it up. Then I will set the base of this to the side, flip it over, and re-ram it. And then when I go to the next mold, I will pull the one I set to the side back, and that will be my starting point. Here I'm cutting the open riser and beside it I'm cutting the sprue and the sprue will tie into the riser above the parting line and it will cut into the patterns under the parting line. Make sure I put it down right. <clears throat> 